Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 34th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to continue our discussion on date and time functions and we're going to check out a few more interesting methods, right? So the first method that we're going to check out is the sleep method and it also requires the time module and uh, this method delays the execution of the calling function or the script by you know a given number of seconds so if you use it then the next command that you have in your function or the next command that you have in your script you know that gets executed with some delay right so i have a script file here and uh, i've already saved it it has the name sleep and uh, i'll import the time module in the script first because as i said to use this method you have to use the time module and you have to import it and uh, let's say i want the script to just display the text hello world on screen so to display the text, I'll use a print function, hello world, and I'll put an exclamation symbol at the end. And, uh, you know, I want the text to be displayed after a wait of, let's say, seven seconds, right? So I'll get the wait by typing in time.sleep, and then within parentheses, I'll simply pass in seven as an argument, right? So let's run this program. And there we go, we see that the cursor is blinking and exactly after seven seconds, we will see our text, right? So there we go, we see hello world. And uh, you could pass in any number of seconds as an argument to the sleep method, you know, and uh, it's extremely useful. You would find so many applications of it, you know, where you want things to happen, but after, you know, some delay and, uh, you know, it's really cool. The next method that we're going to check out is the month method and this method requires the calendar module, right? So I'll import the module first by typing in import space uh, calendar and uh, you know, this method takes two arguments. The first is the year value and the second is the month value and it returns the calendar of the month, right? So I'll use it. I'll actually use a print statement to see the output of this function. So I'll type in calendar dot month. And let's say I want to see the calendar of March 1965. So March is the third month of the year. So I'll type in 1965 first, followed up with a comma and then three. And I'll press the enter key to see the calendar of March, right? This is so cool. And if you want to see the calendar of the entire year, then you could use the calendar method instead. So again, I'll type in print first and then within parentheses calendar the name of the module and calendar the name of the function and uh, it takes you know quite a few arguments the first argument happens to be the year the calendar of which you wish to see so let's say i want to see the calendar of 1994 i'll type in that first and then i'll type in two and this number is uh, you know the maximum width that i want each date to occupy so i want two as uh, you know the maximum width for each day and uh, let's say I want uh, each week to occupy a maximum one line. So I'll type in one here. And you know, the method actually returns the, you know, calendars of individual months in three columns. So if suppose I want 10 characters of space between each column, then I'll, you know, pass in 10 as the last argument. When I press the enter key, I see this as the output, you know, isn't this amazing? I mean, you know, I see calendars of all months and, uh, you know, there's a space of 10 characters, uh, you know, between each column and you can check that out. So I have the cursor blinking immediately after U of Sunday here. So I start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Right, so we have 10 characters of space. If you want this to be spread out a little more, then you could increase the space to 15 characters or 20 characters or as much as you want, right? The next method that we're gonna check out is the is leap method. And this method tells us whether the year that's passed as an argument to it is a leap year or not. It's a very simple function and it uses the calendar module again. So I'll type in calendar dot is leap. And as an argument to it, I'll pass 2008. And when I press the enter key, I see true as the result. And that's because 2008 was a leap year. And if I would uh, execute this method again with an argument 2009, I would see false because 2009 was not a leap year, right? So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. And that's all I have to say about date and time functions. And, you know, we might check out a few more later on in the course. If at all, I come to a stage where I find, you know, the use of something. So I discuss it if I haven't discussed it already in the last few tutorials. And uh, thank you so much. As I said, you know, you guys uh, have to program in Python to get a hang of all these methods. 
and you know try to use these methods in your scripts now right we know how to create scripts we know how to run scripts and you know, we've seen so many functions you know date and time functions dictionary functions string functions number functions and lists and tuples and you know all those methods unless you use them you're not going to get a hang of them so use the functions and happy programming and i'll see you in the next video till then take care